Hello and welcome to my CCT Boolean to Enum tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how these translators uh, are used and why we need them and I will be showing you how to create one and how to modify it. Okay so I'm running a simulation of a basic program that allows a fan to start based on three conditions. Logical conditions, so those are Boolean conditions. So it reads like this, if my system enable is enabled and I, my alarm is not in alarm and my room temperature is greater than my room temperature set point, then start the fan. But before we can start our fan, notice that we have our translation here. And that's because our logical conditions, they are in a Boolean format. See, false, true, true, false. Because you know, Boolean is two states, true and false. And as you know, our fan commands are usually have the units of stop, start, off, on, or disable, in, enable. So notice that our AND block has three conditions and the last one is not being met. So it's outputting a false value. And that false value is being translated into a stop. So let's double click inside my translation and you can see that false equals stop. And if we have a true, it, it will be equal to start, right? So now if we make this condition true, you'll see how my translation will update. So in order for that, we will need to have my room temperature above my set point. So I'm just gonna right click, command, put a value of uh, let's say 78, okay, and send. So you see how this is true. Now my, out, my Boolean output is true and my fan has a start command. So if I double click, you can see that the, the condition that is active is the one highlighted in green. So now true means start. So that's how Boolean in translation kind of works. Now I'm going to show you how to actually create this translation and make the connections. Okay, so I just exit my simulation and now I'm in configure mode. So I'm going to show you a quick way to create your Boolean to Enum translation. So I'm just going to select it, hit delete, confirm. Now I'm going to click on my AND output to make my connection. I'm going to go straight to my fan start stop right here. Click. And there you go. I got my Boolean to Enum translation. Now if I double click on it, you can see that my false condition was associated with my stop and my true with my start. So all this looks good, but there's certain occasions where this is not gonna work. So you'll see why later on in the video. The manual way to do it is by going to my palette uh, tools on my left hand side. And I know that my Boolean to Enum's translation is under selection folder. So I'm gonna expand this and it's right here so i can only i can just go ahead and drag it over and that's your translation another way to do it is just by typing here the name so if i just type boolean you start filtering out and it's a inu okay so it's right there so this is another way to do it let me just delete this one Okay, so now let's try to connect it. So I'm gonna delete my first one. Right click, delete, confirm, delete. And let's see, I'm gonna make my connection from my AND to my input. Good. And then my Boolean output to my fan. And you can see if I click it, nothing happens. So uh, here's a problem. So it's telling me that my fan starts to default value is stop. You see that? And if I go to my 
Boolean output, you can see that the default value it shows off right there. You can see that. So we have a problem right there. So I'm going to click here. Okay, so here is where my units need to match. So by default, if I create a Boolean to in translation, uh, my default input is false and true, which is Boolean, right? Because Boolean is always these two values. But my enum side, uh, the default units are off on. So you can see that my outputs right here is off on. And you know, enum can have many, many different uh, units. So if you recall from my fan star stop, we have the units of stop start. So we gotta mash these units. So let's double click on my translation and I'm gonna go to edit and I gotta change my output, my translation output, which is right here. So I'm just gonna click right here and look for my stop start. So I just gotta go to the S. An easy way is just to, to type the letter S, right? I get closer or I can even type ST, ST. So I get even closer, right? So, and, okay, this is an interesting thing you gotta see. So I'm gonna select star stop and I'm gonna apply. See how this shows uh, different units? That's because I was picking something else before, see? So, but I'm just gonna go to star stop. I'm gonna apply and I'm gonna close. And now let's try to make the connection. So I'm gonna click here and then click my fan star stop and still nothing happens. Why? Right? Uh, so I'm gonna click away. So here's where you gotta pay attention. So let's look at my fan star stop. See my units stop start. So, and if I click over here, we have units of star stop. So these are opposite star stop. So we actually want stop and start. Otherwise it's not gonna work. So let's go to edit again. I'm gonna go to my units and look for stop. So right here, stop, start. Now I'm gonna apply that close and now let's give it a try all right now it works and now another important thing I would like to mention is if you go inside your translation there will be times where you want your false to actually be start and your true to be stopped so you can actually swap these values if I go to edit you can say that, okay, I want my false to actually be start and my true to be stop. So you can invert those two values. Or you can do it, do it the other way around. Uh, over here, you can make this guy true and my other guy false. So that's how you invert the units. So I'm just gonna cancel that. I want, that's how high we want it. And then click close. Okay, let's do one more example. Let's say that we want to see the system occupied when all these three conditions are true. So for that, I need to create an output. So uh, enum output. And I'll double click on it. Edit. Uh, let's name it OCC-S, occupancy status. And I'll give I'll pick the units occupancy effective. That's what I usually use for occupancy status. And then I click apply, close. Now, um, before we create a translation from scratch, because you know it takes more time, let's try to make the connection straight from my end to my occupancy status. And you can see that I can't make the connection. Connection is not allowed. 
So data types do not match. So you can see my source is Boolean and my destination is a multi-state. So why is that? Okay, so let's try again. I'm gonna create another output, enum output. And I'm gonna try to do the same thing. So you can see that in this case, we were able to auto-generate the translation. And I'll tell you why. Because my default enum output, it has two states, off and on. So basically, the translation can figure it out. Because you have my Boolean uh, true and false, or false and true, and it can match it to another set of units which are off on, so, you know, two states. But my occupancy status, I have an occupancy effective uh, units. So this is not only unoccupied, occupied. This is a, like a multiple state enumerator. So let's get, let's try to make this work. So I'm going to duplicate this translation and connect my end to my Boolean. Double click on it and match my units of occupancy effective. So I'm gonna go here, OCC, and right here, I'm gonna apply. Now, the reason why we couldn't auto-generate the, the connection, it's because my occupancy effective has multiple states. See, occupied, unoccupied, bypass, and standby. So I guess the CCT can figure it out when, when you try to do the straight connection. So in this case, we do it manually. And if you see, uh, these are kind of backwards. So for false, I actually want unoccupied. And for true, I want occupied. And I guess in this case, we're not really using the other two states. So I'm gonna apply and leave it like that. And let's see if we can make the connection. And yep, we can do the connection. So that's how we make more complicated translation connections. All right, so this is the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you were able to understand a bit more about this basic but very useful translation tool. Thank you very much.